Hello everyone. Thanks for tuning into our podcast. So for today you have uh, us as your hosts. You have me, Louis, you have Jara. Hey. And we also have Christine. Hello. So for our agenda today, uh, we will be talking about our character analysis for Patron Saints of Nothing, which is a novel written by Randy Ribai, and it's described by many as a coming of age story following a young boy who uncovers who was responsible for the murder of his cousin. It also tackles other topics and issues such as the LGBT representation, portrayal of immigrant identities and problems, and also the injustices in the Philippine system. Okay, so a uh, little trivia first about the author of the novel, Randy Ribay. Um, Randy was born in the Philippines and raised in the Midwest. So basically, he spent most of his life outside of the country. Um, he currently teaches English and lives in San Francisco Bay Area. So if you guys read the novel, you would see why Randy wrote this and who did he use as reference for his character, Jay, with his background. So, hearing about the background of Randy Ribai, he sounds a lot like Jay, which is the main character that the story revolves around. So, Jay, uh, according to the novel, is half Filipino and half American, wherein he was born in the Philippines, but while he was still very young, his parents wanted a better life for him. So, they thought that it would be a better idea to move to the United States. And they now stay, they stayed there in Michigan. So before we start with the first character discussion, um, I should tell you that before every character discussion, I will be asking a trivia question for the audience to try and answer. Um, it's okay if you weren't able to answer it since uh, I'll be revealing the answer after the discussion anyway. But you know, try to be in the game and guess at least. Uh, it's more fun that way. For the first question, uh, what do you think is the reason why Jay stopped writing letters to June? So like I said, I'm gonna reveal the answer later and let's move on with the actual All right. discussion. So for the brief life story, Jaira, could you tell our audience about the brief life story? Okay, so basically, Jay is this Filipino-American dude who is about to go to the University of Michigan college. for college. So basically, a background on him, he's the one who uncovers the truth about his cousin June's death. So a history on like on the relationship of June and him. So they were pen pals until Jay stopped replying. His, yeah. Yeah. Because I don't, he was busy, wasn't he? Or he just didn't want to read it yeah. or reply. Letter was uh, if it didn't anymore that June would just stop bothering him. As far as he knows, June is this um, innocent, nice guy. So when he hears about that June died because he was, you know, a drug addict and a pusher, apparently, he's kind of like, what? I don't think that's true. But then when he starts asking about it, no one wants to tell him. So yeah. he plans to go to the Philippines. But he hid it behind the reason that he was only going there to discover his Filipino root. So there. Mm -hmm. So like, how is Jay as a character developing throughout the story? Well, um, first off, let's point out his character showed us like an insight on um, an outsider's perspective. Because yeah, we have to be honest. Like in the start of the story, he wasn't really uh, a Filipino per se. Yeah, he didn't he really know much about the Philippine issues and affairs. Yeah, yeah so um, his beliefs or like perceptions and cer certain things that was happening on the Philippines was like not parang akma masyado. Because uh. he doesn't really know what's happening. So he's like basing it on what he hears only. So it's kind of more of like an idealized kind of thing. Yeah, so when he went to the Philippines, he kind of discovered that uh, maybe this uh, beliefs should be changed, which he eventually did at the end of the story because uh, of the things that he discovered and learned through his journey. He also gives us this realization that there are injustices in the Philippines and sometimes people don't really talk about it because first, um, the people involved keeps hiding it or like it's just a topic that no one really wants to talk about because it's either you're gonna get um punished for it yeah. or the people around you doesn't want to talk about it because simply they don't believe that the injustices happen 
Yeah, so Jay basically showed us how drug users are actually victims instead of like the the bad people that you know the government wants us to see them. He kind of shows the readers his thoughts of how these drug users are actually victims and they should be given help and guided instead of being killed or stigmatized by society. Because feel like they're. Lost, but they know where to go. Ah, mm-hmm. uh, yung masasabi ko lang kay Jay is that I wanted to be like him. Part na determined siya, determined siya na like once he put something on his mind, kahit na ilang beses na pinag-isipan na mahirap to go and ganyan, ginawa niya parin. Ah, uh, so ayun, I I just really admire his determination to find out the truth about his cousin's death. And ah, uh, isa pa. Na kahit he really pushed this belief na hindi nagda drugs si June, pero eventually finding out that he did, uh, that didn't change his perception about his cousin. He still thinks of him as a, a good person that has the heart to help the poor and you know the the mistaken innocent people that died without justice. Yeah, I really uh-huh. think that his character will like bother people's minds because kahit na galing siya sa America, alam mo yun, parang He he's still very curious about his Philippine roots because it's he's quite disconnected from it, living in America for so long. Ayon, I think it'll like it'll make the readers question that they know and what they don't know about themselves, about their history, uh, of their family and their country. You know. So, uh, what do you think is the reason why Jay stopped writing letters to Julian? Any guesses first? You know? um, he was busy playing games, wasn't he? <laughs> I mean, yeah, for a college boy. Para sa akin kasi, I think Jay is in a part of where he's becoming more busy with his life. Uh, kaya ayon. I mean, he's. We're at a point in our lives where we're starting to realize na our thing, our lives are becoming busier and find it harder to. Arrange events with your friends, like to meet up. So I think yon. Medyo and din nasa sa incip- incipient stages na he's starting to live like an or enter adult life. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I guess you're close to the answer since the answer is he entered in a rom- romantic relationship uh, with a girl named Brianna. So dahil don medyo naging busy siya and yeah, yeah, he didn't really. Replied to. Oh, that's sad. So we'll be moving on to, to June. June. All right. So for the next trivia question, for the next character, what was the drug that June used? All right. So before we All get right. to that, let's introduce who June is first. Um, so June is Jay's cousin who he met once when he went to the Philippines eight years ago. Curious, seventeen-year-old. So kind of like Jay, but in this sense, he's more. I guess more woke to what's happening because of the drug war. He's there. <clears throat> yeah, and he became pen pals with Jay, and he ran away from home four years before his mysterious death. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, so Christine, what do you think about June? Uh, well, ang um, sabi ko lang about kay June is that. Uh, I don't think I can fully blame him for doing drugs, especially yung shabu, uh, which is according to Danilo, is a hunger suppressant. So malay mo sa super hero lang ni Jun nung time na yun. Uh, he didn't really have the yeah. choice except to do drugs to suppress his hunger, uh, especially na ayun nga shabu is really cheap compared to food uh, according to Danilo. It's in. The- <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah I know. I know. Very, it's very true. I feel like nalulong siya sa droga kasi wala na siyang pera. And in our world right now, drugs are a lot cheaper than getting actual food. Which is why, ayun, medyo nagka-contribute sa stigmatization ng mga beggars on the street. You know, yung mga pumunta sa mga kotse tapos kumakatok. Growing up, I was told by my dad to not give money to beggars because they could just use it for drugs. So we ended up just giving them food, which I want. I think it's a which lot. Is better. Yeah, it's a lot better to be honest. True. So, uh, 
in his family after his death, wait, actually even way before his death, ever since like they discovered he was, you know, a drug addict, he, he had this like very bad reputation in his you know, family, especially with his dad's beliefs. Yeah. You know, his dad is a police officer and he's like, drugs are bad. Drug addicts are bad. Drug pushers are bad. They need to be killed and stopped. So, you know, he didn't really give his June a chance. So June ran away. Yeah. And he's basically, you know, this lost, misunderstood person. Even until his death, he doesn't seem like the dude to die. <laughs> like, you know, randomly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I feel like he was misunderstood a lot because he had different views and ideals compared to his dad, Maning. June was yeah, Maning. an activist who, like many of our youth today, speaking against Duterte's administration. And he operates an Instagram account, Gising na PH or Philippines. Character represents our youth a lot more than Jay. Because in his case, he spoke against you know the government, and ayon, it was against his father's beliefs and views. Kaya parang conflict sa kanila. Mm-hmm. I feel like if only his dad was not blinded like loyalty to the government, I feel like things would have he been, wouldn't have died. Yeah, things would have been better between both of them and for June. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. We have Gabby. Hi. All right. <laughs> While Gabby's here, we're going to have Gabby help us talk about Maning and Grace, which are the other two major characters in the novel. According to us. According to us. Yeah. Okay. So let's go with the trivia question first for Maning. Is he the one with June's name in the list of drug pushers? Okay. Let's go to the discussion. So let's yeah. get to Maning. So. Maning is a police officer. Is he like a high-ranking police officer? Yeah. Yeah. His character, he was very... I don't know. Personally, I think he's a very conservative person. Yung political views niya, I guess, yung maibabagay ko lang or may contrast ko lang is kay June. Kasi, ayun. May conflict yung mag-ama dahil nga sa difference in their views and opinions. So, personally, I agree with what Louis has said. Especially with him being a more of like the conservative type. He's a bit of like a traditional Filipino man who believes in the, higher, the thought that the father should lead the family. Um, especially with how he controls even his own family and then the way he looks down upon his brother, Jay's father, because he moved to America, stuff like that. So I really think that he's someone who wants control. Um, and it's especially highlighted with the fact that his job, his job as a police officer gives him a lot of this control. And he has a struggling relationship with his with June because June is more of this free spirit. He want he's like for the people, yeah. and Maning is more of like for himself, something like. That. Yeah, like the difference. Parang you can see it to the day na June is a, a leftist or a socialist kind of person. Yeah. So. Yeah, other than that, you know, he goes through role confusions as a police officer and a dad. So, Shara, what do you what do you think about his character having these role confusions? I think he failed in both roles, to be honest. First, he failed as a father because, um, you know, as a father, you need to protect your children. And he didn't even protect June. He didn't allow June to exercise his rights, yeah. you know. To get due process, to go to court and defend himself, he didn't even try to understand like June's side. Like he was very uptight on his side, so he ended up like abandoning June. Um, also, parang hindi yun na alaga na maayos. Yeah. He let June, 
you know, run away and then didn't even look for him. He didn't do his job as a father. Like he didn't give June a proper funeral. Didn't even try to reminisce about June's good memories. He like just completely forgot about June's existence. Yeah. And he kind of like shunned him in a sense, like even after his death, which is a very bad move for a father. But at least in the end, he kind of mourned for yeah, him. He pays his respect. Mm-hmm. Now, for as a police officer, I na mentioned ko kanina. As a police officer, he he needs to know the laws and he needs to exercise the laws. You know, especially since June is a citizen of the Philippines, but he didn't even give June's right to uh, you know due process. Yeah. And then he allowed uh, a citizen to die like you know in the name of their so-called justice which is illegal according to the law we're not allowed to kill people just because they're criminals mm-hmm. you know because it's not their judgment it, it's not their call to make it's not even uh, our cost our constitution's call to make because you know so i think that's his biggest flaw as um a police officer he believes that Killing them is the right thing without even thinking about, like, you know, maybe they're victims. Maybe they became, you know, drug addicts, drug pushers because of the circumstances that's yeah. happening right now. Yeah, I feel, oh, like, yeah. I feel like we can have money could be a representation of our policemen out there who are also fathers. Because this is a very... This could be a very realistic situation because uh, their children could have different views or beliefs. And ayun, baka yun yung maging dahilan kung bakit magkaroon ng conflict between their relationships. Well, let's answer the trivia question. Any guesses? Angel. Angel. <gasps> what? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, go. Okay, um... So the answer is no. Rather, uh, he even tried to erase his name from the list, according to Tito Danilo. I don't know. I feel like I feel like he would put his son's name there and then regret it. All right, on to the next character, okay. Grace. Um, okay. So the trivia question for Grace is: What was the name of June and Grace's website? For the first part of the novel, Grace's character is somehow like uh, Mani, who, who's ignorant of what's mm. kung ano nangyari do sa death ni, ano, ni June. So parang kahit kaya try na i-ask ni Jay kung ano yung nangyari do sa death ni June, parang ini-ignore lang ni Grace. Pero eventually, uh, in the novel, it is revealed that Grace was actually the one who sent the Instagram message to Jay that led Jay to go to the Philippines to, to find out about June's death. Grace is the younger sister of June. Okay. Uh, so, Gabby, tell us what you think about Grace. So, Grace, I think, was a very interesting character. Especially on the start, it's easy to judge her for how she acts. Um, not to be very judgmental, but <laughs> When I was reading it, I felt like she was the she was the embodiment of a spoiled rich girl who's uh, unaware of what's happening in the world, especially um, given the setting that her brother just died. It's weird how she acts like she doesn't know anything or that she doesn't care. But it's actually the opposite. She's the one behind that Jay even thinks about visiting the Philippines. She's the one orchestrating everything. Like, it's easy to dismiss her as a character that doesn't care. Unbeknownst to us, she's the one who's like really hurting because she lost a brother. She's desperate to get some help, especially uh, living under a controlling household led by her father. So, I think the twist that it was her all along the one who's now putting herself out there in the danger for continuing what June has done before is very admirable and 
Grace ended up being one of my most favorite characters in the novel because of that change in her character, that twist, and that secret. Oh, and another thing about Grace is that even though after she learned about the truth from her Tito Danilo that June did indeed use drugs, she still believes that he was a good yeah. person, that he just got maybe caught up in the wrong crowd, ended up using. So, yeah, she's understanding. She doesn't judge uh, June, yeah, that just because he used drugs, he was a bad person. Maybe there were some circumstances that un- are not known to other people. Uh, Grace's trivia? Okay, trivia is kissing the FDH. Thank you so much for your time, okay. Gabby. All right. See you next time, Gabby. Bye. Bye. Okay, on to the next segment. Everyone, welcome, Ron. Um, so, who are we going to talk first? I'm going to talk about Angel, who was June's youngest sister. Based on her appearances in the novel, she's very active and outgoing. Angel was very welcoming when Jay came to the Philippines. She kept telling him stories about her and her family to keep him up to date with what's happening. When June was forced to leave his house, Grace and Angel would secretly meet up with him from time to time, which shows how much the three of them really loved each other and how close they were. So for the next character, we have Mia. So Mia's another minor character. And we'll also have Ron talk about Mia. Okay. So, although this may not be entirely related to the next character we're going to discuss, um, what song did Reina told Mia and Jay that June used to sing to her? On to the discussion. Okay. So, Ron, could you give a song and a bad Mia? So, Mia is the sister of Jessa, who is Grace's girlfriend. She was introduced to Jay by Grace when they went to the mall where Jay and Mia got to know each other during their time there. Mia studies journalism in the University of the Philippines, Diliman. Apparently, she came to love journalism when she read, the, when she read an article about child trafficking in Metro Manila. She was the one who offered Jay help when he told her about the death of his cousin. Now, I really admire Mia's conviction about journalism. She seems really strong in her belief to spread the truth I have a question because we talked about this before recording the podcast. It was regarding whether or not Mia developed feelings for Jay later in the, the end of the book. Because uh, Mia has a boyfriend, according to Grace. But in the later chapters, based on like the, the interactions, parang may implication that Mia may have been falling for Jay. Yeah. yeah. What do you guys yeah, yeah, think? Yeah, yeah. I, I, so, I personally uh, think that I, I, I think that Mia is starting to have for Jay. Yeah, but like Jay had like a girlfriend. Right? I mean, he had before. Yeah, next stop siyang grip like June. June. Hmm. Feeling ko talaga Pero, oh, I don't know. I think I, I think Mia started to develop feelings for Jay because I think they were like together at like this time where they both felt weak and that they needed someone. I think more on emotional attachment silang dalawa. That's interesting. So, let's answer the trivia question na what song did Reina told me and Jay that June used to sing to her? And the answer is Kundiman. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Okay, next one. Alright. Um to go now, unfortunately. So thank you so much, Ron. Everyone say goodbye. Bye. Bye. Alright. Now we're left with four people and we have here with us our last guest. We have Winnie who will be helping us in discussing Danilo's character in the novel. So, before the discussion about Danilo, um, trivia question na tayo. So, what did June tell his Tito Danilo when they met for the first time after four years? 
Okay, on to the discussion. So before okay. Winnie goes on, uh, you don't remember who Danilo is. Danilo is June's uncle. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Who happens to be a priest. Yes. And um, now Winnie's gonna go on thing about Danilo's character. So go ahead, yeah. Winnie. Um. So Danilo is Manning's brother, who's a priest in a church in um somewhere in Legazpi. So I think that his um. He's a very kind person because since even though he knew that June was like on the wanted list, he still offered a place to stay, which shows like his character as a priest, which is like very kind, caring, very as a very open person. Even though I like his personality and his dedication to the job, I don't agree with his viewpoint on yeah. the church should not like meddle with the affairs of the state because sometimes you might um, accidentally ignore the mga people that really need help. Like, who's re- who are victims from the government mismo. Yeah. So, I think that he should um, be more open to the mindset na the church and state should sometimes work together to help more people. Because if, um, for me, if he continues that mindset, many people will fall on like very bad hands and they're just yeah. gonna be their life are wasted mm. the church um should be more open <laughs> yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. True. i very much agree with that statement because uh, um it's been yeah. going on mm-hmm. for quite a while about whether or not the church should meddle with the affairs just how the state is managing the people. So personally, I think that the church and the state should work together, especially in the situation of the drug war campaign, because uh, there are so much killings happening, and a lot of it are being done without due process. Yeah. So But I feel like I understand his point now. His church tends to the souls like more on spiritual side, you know, like your mind and like yeah. your thinking, you know. But I feel like he should really um, think on a new perspective, yeah. not just because uh, it's very clear that his point of view is for the church to tend to souls, but he doesn't really take into account how big of an impact the lives of the victims or the persecuted are to the society and how it affects everyone else's mindsets about how they see things not only in a political sense but also in a religious perspective mm-hmm. personally uh, i kind of you know sometimes like agree with danilo na maybe the church and the government shouldn't uh, and the state shouldn't uh like intervene with the with each other um ang sa akin lang is like yeah the church can give its ano like inputs and then it can give its like guidance mm. pero at the end of the day like in deciding which like actions to take i think the church shouldn't be like overly like parang active doon sa paggawa yeah. nung, nung nung action it's like The state should consider what the church says and like it should value it because you know the church makes the human rights the dignities they define that. But you know, hindi siya ganun ka progressive yung mga inputs niya palagi. So I think we should just take note of what the church says but not to the point na parang intervening or like actively part of the decision making in terms of the state. For me, So, before we end the, this podcast, let's answer the last trivia question for Danilo. So, what did June tell his Tito Danilo when he met for the first time after four years? Was it, I know, when June ran away, he went to Danilo, basically, like, found out that it was true because, like, I think he saw from his face, like, the sadness that, like, when he was... Telling yeah. him everything about like being, I don't know, being forced away from home, you know, having to live by himself, dealing with drugs. Is that right? 
Yeah, I mean, besides the face, I mean, his body. Kasi super skinny daw niya. Yung nakita niya yung Danilo. So, besides that, uh, Danilo asked June kung uh, what did you do in the last four years? Like that. And ito yung complete line sinabi ni June. I did all that you think I did not do. So, yeah, mm. yun yung answer. Alright. Wow. Mm. Alright, well, thank you so much, Winnie, for <laughs> being here to discuss this character with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. We hope to see you again soon. Bye. Bye. So that's the character analysis. There were so much more that we could have talked about, like um, Reyna, Ines, Jessa, you know, but we we decided not to include them because they kind of, <laughs> they kind of just made like a cameo and then they disappeared. So kind of thought that maybe they didn't have that much importance. So we learned so much today. Other than just the characters, we learned more about how Jay struggled with his identity as a Filipino and an American, like how he perceived things and how everything was just so different and new to him. We also talked about how June, like many other victims, experienced injustices. And in this case, extrajudicial killings which is slowly becoming a common thing here in the Philippines so I guess the book heavily covers a lot of the struggles that families face during the drug war campaign I guess yung kakaunti lang na struggles na nararanasan ng mga Pilipino ngayon is yung parang the government or the vigilantes can kill you just because your name is in the list because you don't really know when it happens how it happens like who is going to do it who's involved i feel like hindi lang yung buhay natin yung apektado eh. apektado rin kasi yung mga tao ngayon financially there are so many families out there who are having troubles with their financial status kasi their family member died, so they want to at least honor their like relative or their family member. But funerals, it's mahal. yeah, mahal siya ngayon. And big problem rin naman siya ngayon, kasi usually yung mga target na extrajudicial killings are the ones in the lower class or minsan middle class. Kasi ay ne yung perception kasi ng karamihan ngayon sa drugs para na associate siya sa mga may hirap. I just wanna go back to the yung sinabi ko kanina about the shabu. Mm. I know it's a drug. I mean, I know it has effects na papabaliw sa mga tao. Kaya sa tingin ko, ayaw ni President Duterte sa mga drug pushers and drug users. Pero kasi, um, yun nga, maybe there's a reason why people, especially the poor people, um, use them. And yun nga, according kay Tito Danilo, it's a hunger suppressant. Mm. So, kung kaysa na patay, I mean, kaysa na gamitin violence na patay na lang sila out of nowhere, dapat we should have just thought of a better solution. Like, they won't even use the drug if if they have the choice to buy food oh. for themselves, diba? I feel like the uh, government should, like, Providing them supplies, especially right now, na nasa quarantine period tayo, and daming barangay and so many families out there na they're forced to rally or riot because wala nga sila natatanggap. I know they um, they prioritize the poor people and stuff, pero I mean we're all in the same case, di ba? Na natamad tayo, hindi tayo makakaroon ng food bigla biglaan, kasi nga sa radio mga yeah the government should you know. Kaysa na mag-focus sila sa bad side ng mga poor people na gumagamit ng drug. Yeah. I think both sides, like, have point. You should listen to both sides in order to, like, make a valid and efficient solution. Kasi, yun nga, sabi, you shouldn't, like, look at one side of a story lang. Yeah. Kasi there's always, like, more sides to it. And then if you're gonna look at, like, one side lang, at the... It's gonna cause problems because you're gonna end up like stepping over somebody else because mm. you don't know what they're like experiencing. You know, it's fair for everyone. Like the decision made is the fairest 
as it can get for everyone. Okay, so that's all for today's podcast. Thank you all for listening. And it's time to say goodbye. Bye. So bye. Bye.